Security operatives heavily guard the place where deposed Amy of Kano Lamedo Sanasi II is held. And the two-week strike by the academic staff union of universities, ASU, is illegal and shocking, so says the federal government. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ock. No fewer than 40 security agents have been said to be deployed in the compound where the recently dethroned Emil Kano, Lamido Sanusi II, at Awe Town in Nassau State. Now, the security agents turned back sympathizers who crowded the house to visit the dethroned Emil, including two monarchs. Journalists were also harassed and asked to delete the pictures they are taking with their phones. What really is the purpose of this? And joining me to discuss this this evening via phone is a legal practitioner, Taiwo Akinami. Good evening to you, Taiwo, and thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Now, the attorney, to all right, the attorney General of Kano State, Ibrahim Mokhtar, on Wednesday said the state government did not banish the deposed Amy of Kano, that's Alaji Muhammad and Sanusi II. How do you react to this in the light of what happened? Well, well um, the challenge we have today is that denial and and pure dishonesty seem to have become the stock and trade of government. And since have become the trademark of government. So if an emir was dethroned, who, who banished him? Now, the, it, is the, it is the government of Kano State that dethroned him. So what were the instructions given to the security operatives? Is it that when he was dethroned, the security of native on their own decided to banish him. What was the instruction from the attorney general? So if the attorney general was not the one, was one who gave the instruction, or the government being represented by the attorney general is not the one responsible for the banishment, but only responsible for the detriment, so who is responsible? I think if the attorney general is explaining to us that they were not the one who, did, who banished him, it behoves him to let the public also understand the authorities that are responsible for banishing him. So I, I think it is an incomplete supply of information if it is true that the Kano State government did not banish the dethroned Emir. So who banished him? Who gave the operative instruction? So those are fundamental issues that is important for us to address. Okay. Now let's put this in proper perspective in a definitive context. He was deposed and taken to Nassau State. Is it yes. an exile and being banished as definitive in that context? You said? Now, he was, he was deposed. Yes. And taken to Nassau State. Yes. Is it an exile and being banished as definitive in that context? Yes, it is, because this is the point. We are talking about two state governments here. We are talking about the Kano state government and the natural state government. I do not think that that the the dethroned emir would just be taken to Nasarawa without consultation with the Nasarawa state government. So I think that this is the truth. When a government takes an action, but the government is not coming, is not forthcoming about explaining to the nation or the state the reason behind such decision, it becomes suspicious. It's been banished. It's not, so, so, so those are the fundamental issues. Now, I am not in the mind of government. I know the reason why they may want to banish him is they are afraid for the breach of the peace. They may want the new emir to be able to settle down. They may believe that uh, the, the, the emir, it will not be, be wise, security speaking, for the, the trained emir to be in Kano. Now, these are reasons that may be in the mind of government. And I'm not in the mind of government. I'm just trying to pry into their mind and trying to see the reason why it must have been banished. But for the government to come out and say that they were not responsible for the banishing is, is the major issue. Okay. Now, you're a legal expert. Help us understand this, because I'm aware that Section 35 of um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said even if you depose someone, they, they have the right to choose where to go stay. But this we didn't see the case of Sanusi Lamido II. 
You see, chapter four, the constitution is clear. The, the Emir has not been accused of a crime. He has been accused of actions that were inconsistent with his role and as an Emir. It is not a crime. Now, the, on, the only condition under which you can restrain somebody's movement is when a court of competent jurisdiction gives an order restraining that movement. In the absence of that, chapter four of the constitution is clear. Funda human, fundamental human rights of every Nigerian is clear, which, which protects the rights of every Nigerian to freedom of movement and freedom of association. So in this case, the, the, the Kano state government has not told us what crime the Emir committed, the, the throne Emir committed for him to be kept under arrest. For you to effect an arrest, whether to take someone to a prison or to keep somebody under a house arrest or to, to take somebody out of his primary location to a secondary location, all of that must be predicated upon the workings of the law. And the constitution, the 1999 constitution of Nigeria as amended is very clear on these issues. I think there are elementary things for 100 level law students in the university. It just becomes difficult when it comes to the interpretation of those who govern. It just becomes difficult when it comes to the interpretation of an attorney general who must have practiced law for at least 10 years before he can be appointed an attorney general. So I don't see anything difficult here. It is just becoming a difficult issue because there's lack of sincerity, there's lack of commitment to truth, there's lack of commitment to the laws of the land. And if those who are supposed to enforce the law are the one breaking the law, what hope do we have for our nation? Now, Taiwo, um, one of the reasons the AG of Kano also gave saying that um, security agents decided to wix Sanusi away from Kano State is because um, that it was due to intelligence report they had. But this intelligence report was never stated what it was about. How do you react to this? Well, intelligence report. Now, there's no intelligence report that is above the provisions of the law. If there's an intelligence report, and the intelligence report is strong enough, why not approach a court of competent jurisdiction and, and, and make this information available to the court? I say we have information. Maybe this man is trying to uh, 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 overthrow the government. Maybe this man is trying to cause the breach of the peace. This is the intelligence report. And on the basis of that, we're asking the court to, res to restrain him or to curtail his movement. That would have been the right thing to do if you have a security information. Now, if you say you have a security report, or, or you, call it, you call it an intelligence report, and this intelligence report is only done to you, you're only going to use it to curtail the movement of another without due process, that still becomes an invitation to tyranny. It becomes an invitation to disorder. It, it becomes an invitation to dictatorship. And that all of this is happening under a democratic setting that we are not in a military government, it's very, very appalling. It is very, very sad. It is very, very disturbing. It is very, 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 very bad. And it is something that is highly condemnable. Now, please note, I'm not an advocate for, for Sanusi. I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert subscriber to his ideology. But the point we are making is that injustice to one is an injustice to all. The point we are making is that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Okay. So that's the point. Right. So due process for everybody to the slave, to the free, to the born, and to the free. That is how it should work. Okay. All of us should be equal before the law. Nobody should be above the law. Nobody should be treated outside the purview and the provisions of the law, which are expressly written and stated. That is the issue. And I, and I bring you the word of Neomela in, in, during the Second World War. He was warning the entire German state against the emergence of Hitler. He said they came for the Jews. I'm trying to paraphrase him now. He said you were not a Jew. The Jews were taken. They came for the Catholic. He said you were not a Catholic. The Catholic were taken. 
They came for the Gentiles. He said, you were not a Gentile. The Gentiles were taken. They came for labor leaders. He said, you were not a labor leader. Labor leaders were taken. By the time they came for you, every other person has been taken. You did not know that when your neighbor was being taken, you were the one being taken. Now, the age of candidates say that it was a normal practice for deposed emirs to be moved away to maintain peace in the state, adding that such an action was not in contravention of the Constitution, which guarantees freedom of movement. But we're told that it's under strong security watch made up of 40 security men. Now, how much of freedom does this afford the deposed emir? Well, um, the, those who come to equity must, must come with clean hands. Thank God that it is not only those who are in government that have access to the Constitution or to the laws of the land. Now, that something has been done before does not mean it is right. There are many traditions that we have followed in the past that some people have come to challenge. For example, we were told that for you to, to have a political party, there were all kinds of conditions, uh, uh, political offices, in one two third of the of the of the uh, of the thirty six states of the federation, until Barabe Musa took Ghana and me challenged that, and the floodgate was open for political parties to be registered. So it's not about what has been done before; it's about what law authorizes this present action. If if, if you want to dethrone the emir, for example, it is not like a thief in the night. It's not that you just woke up and you had a you had a dream, and you you were tortured in the dream and you were instructed to go and depose the emir. It was an attempt, it was a calculated decision. So why didn't put, why have you not put in place all the legal machinery that is necessary to ensure that the emir is dethroned within the purview of the law? So those are the fundamental issues. So as long as we continue to bring this kind of argument that it, that's how it is done, and those who take the action are dodging the matters, the Attorney General has told us, one, they were not the one who gave the instruction for banishment. Number two, the reason why it was banished is because of uh, there's, a, there's an intelligence report. So which one do we want to believe? You are not the one who did it, but you know the reason why it was done. So I mean, I mean, does that does that make sense? So it doesn't make sense. You see, it, uh, it's high time those who are saddled with the responsibility of governance understand that followers are not fools. That followers can think, and followers can make decisions, and followers can make deductions. So as long as you think that we don't know what we are doing, and you think you can just come out and see anything, because in this country we were told that the office of the president was infested with rats when he went away for treatment. There's nothing we have not heard. So I mean, I mean, it's becoming it's becoming very very disappointing. So for me, let them tell us which law of the land guarantees these present actions that have been taken. And if you want to depose an emir, is the emir not, not entitled to even fair hearing to understand why he wants to be deposed and explain it? Does the emir just hear on radio, on TV, that he, he, he has been dethroned? These are fundamental issues. But, but you know, we are in a third world country. And in a third world country, it appears anything goes. Until the people rise up, to begin to ask questions from the people they employed, because we employed government, we put government in power, we are the employers of government, until the employers of government begin to ask critical questions as to how they are governed, as, as to all the people they employed to govern our performing, we continue to have these kind of conversations. All right. Legal practitioner Taiwa Kinlami, thank you very much for joining us and for your contributions on PLUS Politics. We'll go for a quick break, and when we come back, it's more on PLUS Politics. Stay with us. Joining me live in the studio now is Leonard Ebute. Thank you, Leonard, political analyst, for joining us this evening. Now, interestingly, now, um, Sanusi has been in Nasara State now since his removal on Monday and has been denied access to visitors, according to his lawyer. Now, isn't this an infringement of his freedom in some type of way? Yeah, I mean... Um He's a Nigerian citizen and he's entitled to all the rights of a citizen. And so if he's being held against his consent, that of course violates um, his rights as a citizen and he should push for it. Yeah. Um, but that takes nothing from the government of Kanu State's right to fire and to hire 
which is the basis for his dethronement. And so I don't want to make a lot of noise around why or how he was fired, yes. provided, I mean, you have an issue with your employee, there are the relevant courts, you know, of education in the land, particularly for an appointee that is largely political. I think if the government of Kano State is well within their rights to hire him, but not to detain him. You see, this whole idea of detaining someone mm. for their safety is not only ridiculous, it's also stupid. If you are going to be concerned for my safety, it cannot be without my consent. consent yes. And so it's nonsense, really. The man was not unsafe as Emir, and suddenly he's unsafe because he's no more Emir. He was a citizen at some point before he became Emir, an influential one at that. And so if he is able to live in Nigeria or wherever he wants to be safely, uh, detroning him shouldn't call for additional safety precautions or all of that. It's just nonsense in my view. Now, there, there seems to be a contradiction of thought right here. Now, a fact check showed a contradiction between Mokhtar's position and the letter of deposition that was given to Sanusi on Monday. Now, it was learned that uh, while the SSG did not say in a statement that Sanusi had been banished, but a copy of the letter sent to Sanusi read that he would be taken to Nasara State. Mm. Contra contradictory statement between the SSG and the AG of Kano here. Obviously, they did not come to that meeting prepared to dethrone Sanusi. They probably came to that meeting and somebody raised the idea and it looked like a good idea and a knee-jerk reaction and they put some documents together and had the guy fired from his job. Uh, maybe they fired him for the right reason, wrong reason, that's not the business of the day. And so when you see this kind of contradiction in government messaging, it tells you two things. One is that it's a knee-jerk reaction. Second is it's a telltale sign of the quality of people you have around the government. It means there is no harmony, there is no clear messaging. And this is the kind of con uh, confusion that lawyers thrive in. So I, had, I am happy for Sanusi's lawyers to go to town. Yeah. Now, just before, before we wrap up on this segment now, Section 35 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria says that even if you depose a person, you should allow him to choose where to stay. That is not the case here with Sanusi. Yes, ex again, if that is not the case, then there's a, there's a lot of meat here, a lot of juicy meat here for Sanusi's lawyers to take to court. I am a believer in the legal system, and I believe that if for any reason Sanusi's rights have been violated, he's in a better position to fight for his rights than most of us ordinary citizens of the Good. land. Yeah, so we'll All see. Right. Political analyst Leonard Ebute, thank you for your contribution on this segment. And we'll take a short break now, and when we return, the reaction of the federal government to the two-week warning strike of the ASU is up next. Stay with us. <laughs> 